Hey guys, Aaron Dorr here with the American Firearms Association. As you know, AFA fights for your gun rights in state capitals and in Congress. We also like to show you the successful use of the Second Amendment in these self-defense breakdown videos. As always, guys, subscribe to our channel for more content. And what we like to do is show you successful uses of the Second Amendment. Uh, the woman who stops a would-be rapist, the homeowner who stops a home invasion. A lot of times we learn what to do by watching what somebody else did right. That's not what this video today is about. This is about what not to do if you find yourself in and around a robbery situation, not armed robbery, but a robbery situation. I'm gonna play this video for you guys at full speed. Then we're gonna stop and slow it down. As always guys, we fight for you in capitals and in Congress. We are political activists who fight for the second amendment. We're not lawyers here at AFA. I'm just giving you our take on what we would do if we found ourselves in this situation. And as always, weigh in in the comments section. What do you think? You agree with our analysis? You disagree? What would you do differently if you were the store clerk in this situation? Let's hit play. The kids come walking in from the parking lot. He's driven. The, he's looped the building once or twice with his buddies in that SUV. He comes inside. Very nonchalant, no weapons evident, very casual, walks to the back of the store and he grabs, uh, well, some would say pop, some would say soda, some would say cola, depends on where you live in, Amer in America, right? He grabs two bottles, the value was $4 per the police report, walks to the back corner of the store, looks around, nobody's watching, heads outside and he kind of nonchalant jogs over towards his buddy's SUV. Witness comes out or the uh, other customer comes out and here comes the store clerk now. Comes out of the store, draws his gun, fires, fires again. He now receives fire from the guys in the vehicle and he retreats behind a pillar to get cover. So I'm going to slow it down for you now. We'll play it back at half speed. I'm going to give you guys our take on what we think should have happened here versus what actually did happen. So let's hit play. The key thing here to notice is, is what? This, this kid, who's obviously a thief, obviously a criminal, displayed no firearms, displayed no handguns. In fact, he didn't even talk, as far as we can tell, to anybody in the store the entire time. So is he a thief? Yes. Does that make your blood boil? Yes. Are we all angry with the state of the justice system where prosecutors don't prosecute criminals like this? Yes. But from a legal standpoint, we have to be aware of the fact that if there's no violence, if there's no insinuation of violence, if there's no weapons displayed, if there's no conversation even had between this little criminal and the store clerk to come out there with a firearm in your hand, let alone begin shooting at people, is grounds for legal charges in certain jurisdictions. So he runs out to the car. This customer leaves the store. Maybe she saw it. Maybe she didn't. And here comes the clerk. He's obviously upset. I would be too, just to be clear. Comes out and right about there, he draws his handgun. He brings it up. He fires. He fires again. And these guys who are leaving, they now fire back at him. You see him crouch here. He's getting uh, fired upon multiple times. And he ends up hiding behind the pillar in the video cuts right there. So again, while acknowledging the frustration this clerk has as his store is being robbed or being stolen from by a petty criminal, we have to be real with the fact that in many jurisdictions, with no weapon displayed, with no conversation even being had amongst the clerk here and that criminal, to go outside with a firearm in your hand and to shoot at them is going to oftentimes land the store clerk in hot water with the authorities. So what could he have done better? Well, first of all, if you're going to go outside at all, just go out there to get their license plate information. Your video cameras probably already had that, but if not, get their tag information, vehicle description, and call the police. It was two bottles of pop. 
it was $4 of merchandise. To go outside and risk a lethal confrontation showed this guy was in a bad headspace, and we cannot let that happen to us. If the guy was armed, it's a little bit different, but even then to go and follow him outside after he is leaving and the actual encounter is over puts you in a very difficult situation. Now, blue states, of course, usually don't have, but sometimes do, stand your ground law. Red states, almost all of them these days, have a version of stand your ground law. But it really doesn't matter if you're in a blue state or a red state. All states follow some version of the AOJE principle, ability, opportunity, jeopardy, and exclusion. So let's break that down very quickly. Before you can use force against a, a person like this, you have to kind of meet that four-part test. And again, doesn't matter if you're in a blue state or a red state. Ability, number one, does the bad guy have the ability to actually harm you? Is he armed? Does he have personal weapons he can bring to bear to use against you in a lethal force situation? In this case, the answer is Maybe. I mean, maybe he could have used his fist, but these two guys were similar enough in age. There's not really an, an obvious ability for this criminal to ass assault or harm the store clerk. Opportunity. In this, in, in this case, the opportunity was there. They were present. They were physically close by. If someone uh, phones in a threat over the phone to you and threatens to kick your blank, well, he might want to do it. He might have the ability, but he lacks the opportunity. This, this th uh, thief did have the opportunity in this situation. Jeopardy. Here's the big one in this case. Are you actually in jeopardy? Does the ability, opportunity, and the overall situation result in you, the good guy, being in actual physical jeopardy? The answer here is certainly no. The clerk in this case could have stayed in the store and had no jeopardy against his own safety. The only jeopardy took place after he went outside and fired at their vehicle. They then returned fire back on him. So he was not in jeopardy of his physical safety when this situation happened. And fourthly, or finally, is exclusion. Now, what else could you have done? Was self-defense the only option you had to the exclusion of everything else? And the answer here, again, simply is no. The clerk did not have to go outside. He did not have to draw a firearm. He did not have to shoot at that vehicle. He put himself in that situation where shots were being fired from multiple parties, and he did not pass the jeopardy or the exclusion test from that AOJE um, uh, standpoint. The problem with this also is that that unnecessary gunfight got that woman who you saw moments ago, she got hit by the, the thugs who were leaving the scene uh, by their gunfire. So she was hit. Never should have happened. This guy probably will face charges. We could not find a conclusion on this situation as of yet. If you're in that situation, if it's an unarmed situation where he's simply stealing merchandise from the shelves, that is not the time to draw your firearm, let alone engage in that use of force situation. Guys, if you agree with me, let me know. If you disagree, that's okay, too. Put your comments in the comment section. And I would go beyond the legal aspects of this. There's also a moral component to this. If you talk to soldiers, you talk to cops who have used lethal force in real situations, you will know in talking to them, if they're willing to, to speak about it, that you're going to deal with this for a very long time. You're going to relive this situation in your brain for years down the road, maybe forever. I mean, Kyle Rittenhouse, this young man's life is over as he knew it, right? He's used lethal force. The entire country knows his face now. He can't go to college. He can't get a normal day job. His life is forever changed. And so if you're going to go through that trauma, that turmoil, and the, the ramifications afterward, I want to know for me that that situation was worth it. So in the case of Kyle Rittenhouse, he was about to be murdered. So in that case, he had no choice but to use lethal force. So when he replays those situations in his mind at night, mentally, morally, he should feel a sense of justification. What he did was right and necessary. That's not the case here. It, had he actually shot that uh, thief and killed him, he'd have to sit there and think about that, maybe in a jail cell, very likely, for the rest of his life. I shot somebody who stole two cans of soda from my store worth $4. 
that's not a kind of uh, of dilemma I want to have on my conscience uh, late at night for years and years down the road. So in conclusion, guys, we would say uh, get the description, get the license plates, call in the vehicle, call the police. Do not engage. Do not draw your firearm and do not fire on somebody who stole four dollars of merchandise with no weapon displayed. That is our take on this situation, folks. Subscribe to our channel for more content. And as always, give us your feedback in the comment section. Thank you.